Uh, this is the Tom and Pat Gish Award uh, presentation for 2010. We were a little late in uh, getting the award uh, decided upon, and we didn't want to be any later in awarding it. We really think it's important to either give the award in a national setting or uh, in the state where the recipient or recipients uh, will receive it. And as you'll see, we've, uh, we've done that in the past. I want to tell you just a little bit about what I do, and uh, then about Tom and Pat Gish, and then about your colleague. In 2008, we gave the award to the publishers of the Nashoba Democrat in Philadelphia, Mississippi. And if you know anything about the civil rights era, you know that it was in Nashoba County where the three civil rights workers were murdered in 1964, and no one was brought to justice for their murders for 41 years. Their newspaper felt do that. So we got some pretty good winners, and we got another one this year. Sam, come on up. Thank you. This is, this is one of uh, Sam's iterations when she was in uh, Kentucky. She looks a little different today. <laughs> We're getting her uh, the Tom and Pat Gish Award uh, for her work in Corbin, Kentucky primarily, but also in Jacksonville, Texas, where she worked before. You know, when we started this award and uh, used tenacity as a criterion, I never thought I would give it to anybody who was not yet 30. <laughs> but in the four and a half years that she spent at the Corbin Times Tribune in Kentucky, she had to have tenacity to get the job done. And here's what she did. She held this local sheriff accountable. This was simply put a bad guy. And she went after him with the help of a good reporter and uh, help from her chain. We gotta give the uh, community newspaper holdings uh, uh, a nod here. They uh, uh, supported uh, this work. This is a 6,000 circulation daily newspaper in one of the poorest counties in Kentucky. But they got it. And there was some risk. If you read Samantha's piece in the latest issue of Neiman Reports, a copy of which I have here, you'll find that she and her reporter bought firearms because they thought their physical safety was in danger. But this wasn't just the first time she'd taken on local officials. Sam first came to my notice when she uh, revealed that the uh, local tourism commission wasn't really uh, promoting tourism. They were supporting the local airport, which a lot of uh, you know, local uh, muckety mucks used. And we found out that she had uh, that kind of a record in Jacksonville, Texas, too. So we thought that she really was a worthy recipient of the Tom and Pat Gish Award. So, step forward, and Lori will take our crew. to do some investigative piece, it's not personal. Everybody thought he must have had something to share. 
he must have had something on me. There must have been some personal connection with my family that I wanted to go after him. But that's not what it was about. And we took some flack as a newspaper for it, but um, and our advertising representatives <laughs> took a little bit of flack for it. Um, although now that he's been arrested, it's sort of you know, calmed down. But um, I think it's important that that continue to happen in small papers. Um, it's the reason for the newspaper. It's not reading it. <laughs> just, a, just a closing word. Um, they say that community journalism is relationship journalism because you have a closer and more continuing relationship with your subjects, sources, and your readers. Um, but it also means that uh, you're always in the business of managing the personal versus the professional. And it gets all the more difficult when you live in a county where a lot of people view public offices as personal possessions. That's one of the fundamental problems in that part of the country. And it, you know, it's not unique to uh, Appalachia. It happens lots of places. And it's the job of newspapers to hold those kind of people accountable because they're supposed to uh, uh, operate at the consent of the government and operate in the public interest. And that's what newspapers are supposed to do. Too. They're also supposed to make money. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha, are you fielding questions? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. I have two, please. Um, how did the first one? How did you get on the trail? Did you, were you thinking I want to find some possibly salacious, for want of a better word, story? Um, so how did that? What was the first step on that path? And then now that you're in Tillamook. Oh, yeah. I've got some things in the hopper, is what I'm saying. But it, it takes a while to develop these things. And then um, the paper ran a small story about this award, and I had like 50 phone calls. Oh, like, well, you got to look into this. And, and well, you know, if 1% if of those pan out, then that's great. I think there's a lot of stuff that goes on in small towns that people have just never questioned. The sheriff thing came up because I literally heard my sports writer make a joke about being able to buy a gun at the back of the sheriff's barber shop. Because it's a small town the sheriff is also a barber. And it was just sort of a joke in town that you could, and I thought, well, that's really odd. There's maybe something to that. And so I sent an open records request to view his uh, evidence logs, and he got really defensive and refused to give them to me. So then I had to fight to the Attorney General's office to get access to the evidence laws. And then I had a spiral from there. But he had to do so uh, I didn't think there would be anything to it, honestly. I just thought, well, let's just check it out. That's what you're supposed to do. Maybe there's something to it. But it got bigger and bigger. We found out that there was not evidence being logged. There were months where nothing was logged. The guns were not there that were supposed to be there. The drugs was not accounted for. And then when we looked into the cases that these things were supposed to be from, they were getting magically just dropped in the court and never prosecuted. So he hadn't prosecuted a single drug case in all of, I think, 2009, which is a lot considering in Appalachia we have quite a bit of a drug problem. Apparently the sheriff did too. Were you not here? What about you not here? Um, he did.
if you do it in a respectful way and a professional way, in the long run, it, it helps the paper's reputation. The paper has a reputation of just being the chicken dinner news and the bake sales and stuff. I don't, I don't know that you get the same kind of readership. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you.